demonstrating, and also a few... The bees will be asked back. <laughs> uh, a few, a few, very, very, quite recently, at our Minster exhibition, Peter won a public award for his paint, cupping painting, mm. and I have to tell you that Mick Craven has never forgiven me. <laughs> it's Anne, it's Anne with the abstract that's yeah. my enemy. Oh, yeah, don't talk about that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't do one, so it's okay. Um, there's a lot that I could say about, um, Pete, about Peter's about his prolific work of experience, in, his expertise in all media and craft work as well, and other pursuits such as Irish music and clay pigeon shooting, so pay attention at the back. <laughs> he has travelled widely in the for eight years in France, where he still has a home, painting and teaching all the time, which is his passion. His articles have appeared in lots of publications such as Leisure Painter, International Artist and the SAA magazine. In short, we are I'm proud to welcome a man who has extensively developed and refined his art interest and is show, sharing some of that with us today. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely to be back with you all, many faces I know from the past, and of course some new ones as well, fantastic. Um, what I'm, two hours isn't very long really, hopefully you won't fall asleep in that time. Uh, I am finally going to just stand up, as many of you know, I've just come back from Florida yesterday, so I got back at 7 o'clock last night after a 20 hour trip, waiting oh, 7 yeah. hours in, in Amsterdam for instance, so fairly tired, and I'm going to paint by um, autopilot. Uh, today then, it was to discuss really the excitement of using mixed media and different mediums. So I've got massive different paintings I could show you. The, the Art Society in Grimsby, North, North Links Art Society. Um, and they're a lovely crowd and very good artists amongst them, I must say, as well. And I struggle to win those few prizes. <laughs> but um, so you've just seen and yourself right. up there. Simple palette. It's just a large sandwich box. You can use any ones you want, but make them high enough. Two layers of paper towel. One layer of greaseproof paper is better and just wet those, and, you are, and when you've got the lid on, they'll stay wet for months, literally months. Um, did you know that you can freeze oil paints? Yes. Yeah, you can actually put cling film around your palette and put them into the freezer, don't, don't waste those oil paints at the end, it is possible they will thaw out again. Lots of tips I can give you, but only so much time today. We've got some um, very delicate tools today to use, as well as quite um, heavy ones. I mean, we've got <laughs> delicate tools like this. We're going to be using that. Uh, this is a lovely one to paint with, Kate Trowell. Um, Stand knives. That's my favourite shape painting knife because you can get left and right of these, by the way, uh, because you can see the various ways you could paint with that one tool. So, although I've got sets of painting knives, that's my favourite. I'm going to get my. I usually use a smock, but I'm going to go cooking today. <laughs> that's that's synthetic brushes. Yes, the nylon long handle synthetic. Um, I find these days that the synthetic brushes are so good even for watercolour, that you know, to pay out for very expensive sable and so on, you don't need it. Um, the, the artificial sables are so good really now. My watercolour brushes, I can almost get away like one Ransom did with a hake, and I have hakes. I can get away with a pro art over mop and the rigour almost for the entire painting if I want to. Um, talking of mixed medium, this is one of the pieces just done. Um, for a, this is a demo piece, a workshop piece the other week, Snow. Talking about snow, and a couple of these pictures I've got here, um, the snow is not white. You just begin to see the, the brightness of that painting in the light there. You can't, this light is really poor to see this in. You can't really see it. You just begin to see the colours there. But this low light isn't helping you. But like, as an impressionist, the impressionists believed that where there is light, there must be colour. So there's no such thing as black, there's no such thing as white. Because there must be colour reflecting it. And you can see just how detailed you can go down with these shapes. Now, my way of painting, and it's so simple for you guys that struggle with detail or whatever, or get panicky about doing a horse, or, um, but if you start risking trying something new, don't worry about who's going to see it, don't worry about waiting that little cheap canvas or a bit of paper, that's what it's going to be. You'll take maybe two steps forward, one step back occasionally, but you cannot move forward without trying something new and taking them out work my colours up over the top, finishing, as I've been showing at hand, with a new resin that we can use. And you can pour it onto a quarter inch, half an inch thick. So when the whole painting is done and dry, you can pour this resin on top and get this lovely resin gloss. And you can imagine what the water and the wet medium like 
and there was that glass, like a glass table. It doesn't pour off the side of the picture, don't cheap, but it gives a wonderful effect. Timing now, one minute of film, so we'll see how fast we do on this. Right, I mean, I could work straight into this with my big brush. Um, I love this, this brush, actually. It's, if I get it going again, it's got a bit of So I want to be starting with these cooler colours. So I could do this all with a brush and sponges, but you want to see me working with the, the roller mainly today. I'm going to start off just for fun with the brush and then work the roller over the top because I want to show a little bit of everything. Um, I haven't got two cameras on me, so I can't show you mixing as well as plonking on the palette. Sorry for those of you that I'm trying to out of the way as much as I can, but some of you are going to miss a bit here. Hopefully you up there. Uh, right, when the, now that's, this is, most of this is heavy body paint, but some of it isn't. You know, I mean, I, I could paint just with this brush, I and mean, I can paint quite fine lines with this brush, you know, by, by doing trees like this, or I can paint with the larger areas. So that one brush I can almost do a painting with in itself. When you're painting water, if it's moving water, you're far more gestural. If you're painting still water like this, then we want to be painting our verticals first and then the horizontals afterwards. And you see, even with that look, just those few strokes, you start to get a feeling of water. So smooth water, verticals first, do the shadows first, do the reflections first, and then the surface marks afterward, the lights and the darks afterward. If it's going to be a very flowing river or stream, then you're much more gestural with your strokes. Right, get a bit of these colours in just to start with. Just so I can show you what happens as we carve into that. Give you an idea, get some idea of it. Colour, and it's hopefully it'll dry fairly quickly here because there's plenty of heat in here. Okay, so we see what a brush will do. And I could continue painting that whole painting that way, just painting out my, my white canvas. Now let's get a, a roller going. I use one of these little trays mostly for a roller, but you can use the ordinary palette. I mean, I thought just, just an ordinary baking tray. Just something that'll stay still. I want to just wet my roller first of all. You don't want a very wet roller, otherwise you end up with it trickling down the... Just make sure it's dry enough to use. Should be like this one. So let's continue with these colours here, just, just to... Um, I'll start making some, some greens now for this, back, cool greens for the background. Then. Don't just roll the sponge into there, roll the sponge through the brush like this look. So you're not wasting the paint on your brush. We'll see how it takes. Now that's just one layer. I'll come back to my cools here. And we're going to work light against dark as well. Already now you see me starting to work the light against the dark here of the tree. So yes, I could work with sponges. I'm going to work with a bit of a knife into this later. And look at these lovely marks that we can do. See, I'm just letting the other colours show through. I'm not using it quite flat now. I'm just tilting it a little bit to get the effect of these branches, these umbrellas of branches coming down and through here. These are my mid-tones. Let's get rid of this white canvas, horrible stuff. <laughs> now, you might say, what about using a coloured ground? Yes, I do love using coloured grounds, especially if I'm using a brush more than this. Um, so, you know, to work this over a dark ground would be very nice because that would then glow through. So you could use a bright red, whatever you wanted. You can rub with the sponge as well. So although I can roll, I can also rub with it for smaller, detailed areas. Landscape coming already? You see how yeah. effective it is, don't you? You know, it's a, a very effective way to work. I'm painting a picture of Burlington Harbour once and I could not get the sunrise correct. And I was putting stronger and stronger and stronger oranges just wasn't working. Foolish man, I should have been making stronger and stronger cools, which is what I did then, to make the oranges stand out. Very often in a painting that you think is wrong, it's not the thing you think is wrong, it's something next to it. So don't keep repainting the same bit, see if it's something over there somewhere else. We can glaze one colour in over another, so that we've got the same colour happening throughout the painting and it starts to link it together, it pulls it together. We don't just have green grass, green trees, blue sky. Now I'm suggesting the possibility to you of a workshop sometime, and maybe it would be nice to do something, I mean, apart from this, the water and pastel ones I showed you might be an idea if you'd like to try something like that. Something quite different to get on. Right, I'm almost to the stage where I start to, I might have to actually wash my 
roll over. Before I do that, I'm going to work. I need work. Let's take some stronger greens now. And as I put these stronger greens in, we're going to suddenly notice how soft these colours I've been doing are. See, when I'm painting on white, they look very strong against it. You've got to get rid of that white so that the paint isn't so strong. Same with watercolourists, you know, so many of you, when the colour's on your brush, use it. If you wash your brush out, especially with watercolour, every time you go back, you've got to, unless you dry your brush out, you've got a watercolour brush loaded with water, and it thins out the paint you've just mixed. Um, not good. Could you stretch the water? No, I'm saying it's half time, now it's half time, I should carry on. Right. By all means, go and get a cup of tea and coffee, come and talk to me while I'm working, and then in 10 minutes time, we'll sit down again, but if I don't keep going, then... 10 minutes. But you have to choose between one flat or four. Is this the one that's going to share, though? Yes. Dark again. You brazen hussy, you. <laughs> oh, you're using your oh, orange, you love your orange. I love this. That's a light. They have their own names. You know, you, mm. you can't. No. Yes. But you really want to keep, I know it sounds like I'm trying to sell you, you really want to keep a set for each. But if you start, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Peter. If you start using acrylic brushes with oils, when you come to the oils to acrylics, the brushes have got clogged up with the oils and the turps and the. Take me a month or something. Do you want to put the money back? I mean, it's easy. Well, he's he's just technique on plein I know, you haven't, you haven't been going an hour yet, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm ready to start on detail. I'm ready to start on knife and detail. Mm. Don't go too tight straight away with your brushwork. Keep it loose, keep the whole thing flowing. Paint in between some of these areas now. Make them a little bit stronger, a bit darker. Are you using neat colours or are you mixing it? I'm mixing them, yeah. I mean, are you mixing white in there? Not much, um, because I'm, not, I'm only still doing my dark and mid tones. Um, if I had a colour that was going to, like yellow, that was going to disappear, I might, I'm going to be doing it when I come to these very light areas. Look. I've got the, all of these to really bring out the sparkle yet, we're only, just, we're only a third into it. Techniques again, I mean, I, I, there's one painting, a demonstration I do, where I do almost the whole painting with my hands and with a sponge. It's a river scene of a Kennet going back, Kennet Navy Canal, and the boat in the background, and trees like this, and I do the entire work with my fingers. So brush strokes that are about the marks, I'm not doing texting yet, really. I'm just picking up on these. Now I can continue with filberts, or I can say, right, you know, let's, um, let's use one of the little rounds. And uh, that's why you've got a full set there to be able to... Right. I'd... If it was a bigger painting, I'd be using the bigger knives, but um, let's have a bit of fun with some of the knife now. You can see how we can use texture with the knife as well. You can put it on hard, you can just dab it gently. We don't have to. Uh, so we're going to show. There's so many ways of using these tools. Is that white? This is lemon yellow and white. Not That's using white. pure white. This is a cool. Take your fingers if you want. Do what you want. Enjoy. Get into it. Get involved in it. Okay, that was a very light, cool yellow. Let's come across here and just start to add a little bit of a, a warm yellow. And how that is working against the cooler. Start with <laughs> the heaviest sponge here. Oh, you've got to have a sense of humour in life. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have realised. I wonder how long we're missing, missing filming. Right, so since I was last filming, possibly, I've used the painting knife to, to work up the textures on here and the brush just, just to work a few finer details. I want to now work from larger textures down to smaller. Let's more immediately look at these lovely pebbles here. And I think I'm going to want to be using an orange sort of magenta for this. Drag it there a bit, just drag these branches down. 
rather than um, pushing it and dragging across these branches. You can go anywhere you like. You can go back and use a brush anytime you want. There's no rules and regs. It's whatever you need as you go along. Be totally free with it. Do the colours soak in? Hmm? Do the colours soak in? A little bit. It depends how thin they are. Yeah, I mean, the, the heavy bodies... Yeah. <laughs> covering my face in paint. The heavy bodies tend to stay, but yeah. some colours sink in more and go more in out, which is why I always varnish my paintings at the end. Now, at the moment, I haven't put anything really warm in. In just a minute, I'm going to put on some oranges and browns that will really bring these cools out. We've got to have some warmer colours. Rather than going straight into a very strong cadmium orange, I'm going to start off with a more subtle yellow ochre and then gradually add my warms as I go along. Okay, let's go to slightly more orange and just see what that does. I'll take some cadmium orange into that deliberately and that will make those colours seem duller. 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 Because it's a stronger colour, it's a stronger warm. So now that's more subtle, yeah, isn't it? I want to play these colour hues a bit more. Here, there's a lovely light turquoise um, coming through with a pink reflection as well. I need to come back with a brush on that in a moment. And actually, start painting some more of the details in. I'm just going to put some darks in with the sponge, and I'm going to finish off this painting with a smaller filbert on the details of lights and cools and warms. So I just want a bit more texturing of darks here. Use a brush for the purpose that you're going to do. I mean, for instance, here I've got a fairly small filbert, so I can come down the edges of these leaves and just to the right size filbert for these leaves, just to catch the light as I come down here. And get a cascade of. I love doing this in actual reality. When I'm out there, this is one of my favourite times when I'm actually painting in these leaves cascading down and through. And then they cascade right down and drop down back onto the ground again as they die in autumn. It's a nice way to work. Does that give you enough then for today? Give you some ideas of using all these different ways together that we can do. Yes, I could go further with it. I will go a bit further later, but at the moment, I don't say. Uh, I'll bring some more cools down into here. But I think if you want to question time, now is the time for the questions. <laughs> A few minutes uh, yep. left, so I will ask. Please, yes, side. any medium, any ideas, any you know, if I can yes, help out, I will. After that, I'm sure you can just come and have a look at the oh, yeah. that Peter, yeah. uh, Peter has for sale. Well, this one that I was doing for North Links, the Art Society, the other day, I've uh, got it back here in daylight now. It's quite fun, it's quite attractive, but I think we need to finish it off and work on it a bit more, uh, just to finish this film off and show you where it would be taken to if I was uh, working on it normally, uh, not just for a demonstration.
perhaps as far as I want to go with this one, quite happy with that now really, uh, I've taken it quite a way further forward, at least half again, much further than I thought I was going to go. It's been so much fun playing with all these colours, having worked so loosely earlier, I can now build up those ones, or I could now build up those ones, to finish it off. Mm -hmm.